Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. I'm uh, Shazad Damil. I'm a fourth-year medical student in Queens. And like Rayyan, I had the opportunity last year to do a master's in public health in the middle of my undergraduate training. And what's worrying about breast cancer is the proportion of women that present with late-stage disease. So for those who don't know, cancers are stage from one to four. Stage one being the earliest stage of the disease and stage four being the last stage, by which stage the cancer has gotten larger and has spread to different parts of the body. And you can imagine by, by the time someone gets a stage four disease, the, it's harder, it's more difficult to treat, the patient suffers more, and most importantly, their survival is associated with it is much lower. And also, in terms of resources, it's much more expensive to treat late stage disease than it is to treat early stage disease, and it consumes a lot more resources. So for Sudan, it's in Sudan, it's estimated that approximately 80% of women initially come with stage, stage three and four disease and only about 5% come with stage one. Now this is just estimates because this is, the, this is just from the literature. And so we see we have a clear issue here with late detection and late presentation in Sudan. So how do we control this? Well, the two main ideas in behind uh, cancer control are prevention and early detection. So with regards to prevention, there's a number of risk factors that have been identified for breast cancer. So things like lifestyle factors, diet, obesity, some medications, and also things like not breastfeeding are associated with breast cancer. But breast cancer isn't a disease that's entirely preventable because of the, the, because of the genetic influences on risk. So uh, the mainstay behind breast cancer control is actually early detection. Increasing the, the, increasing the number of people that we're detecting in stage one and stage two disease and decreasing the number of people that are progressing to stage four. So uh, with regards to early detection, there's a number of things that we need to consider in order to achieve it. The first thing is awareness. So people need to be aware of breast cancer, they need to be aware of its signs and symptoms, they need to be aware of the importance of early presentation and early detection and not ignoring their symptoms. Um, so currently in Sudan, aware, there's a great lack of awareness with regards to cancer. Um, so there's a number of ways in which this can be improved and developing from what Dr. Miyada was talking about earlier, the whole systems approach, the idea that health is not just the responsibility of the healthcare sector. So other sectors could play a role in promoting uh, health in terms of breast cancer and increasing awareness. So things like um, the education center, uh, the education sector, sorry, uh, in including it in school curricula, and also uh, telecommunications, like we were talking about earlier, could play a vital role in, in, in sending those messages to the public about early detection and early presentation. The second thing is um, screening. So screening is basically where you have a group of people who are at risk of a disease, and they're checked every few years to see if they're developing any signs or symptoms of the disease. And there's a number of different methods that can be used for screening. And one of the most widely employed methods in the developed world is mammography, which essentially is like a, an x-ray for the breast to view to see if there's any changes within it that could potentially be cancerous. And we see that mammography is effective in the developed world. We see that it's, it's effective in early detection, which is the, and we know that we have an issue with late presentation in Sudan. So the question is, should we have mammography in Sudan? And this was actually the area that I researched last year. And I found that there was a number of different factors that would suggest that possibly mammography may not be the best option for Sudan in this moment in time. So things like the obvious one, cost. Mammography is very costly and not compatible with the current expenditure in health in Sudan. Second thing would be uh, resources. It's very resource intensive. And I don't mean just the machines itself. People need to run the machines, you need staff, but also maintenance in order to sustain it as a screening program, a uh, screening method. And also there was a number of other factors, for example, the age at which women in Sudan suffer from breast cancer. We in Sudan get breast cancer almost a decade younger than women from Western countries. And mammography isn't a method that's effective for younger women because, of the, because the breast tissue is denser, which is why in countries such as the UK, women don't get screened below the age of 50. So putting all those different factors together, it suggests that mammography may not actually be the best example for Sudan in this moment in time. So this is an example of the, not everything that works in the West will work in Sudan. We can't just look at what other countries are doing and then just try and mirror that into um, 
our, into our uh, country. We need to adopt prevention strategies that are compatible with our resource levels that suit our populations and that will be successful. So um, I've, alternatives to mammography for screening would be breast self-examination. This is basically where the women ch uh, self-examine their breasts and if they notice anything that then, then they'll need to be referred for treatment or clinical breast examination where someone who is trained to examine the breast will then conduct that examination. And there was actually a, like a pilot screen, screening program in Jazeera where they trained local volunteers to examine uh, women's breasts and then they uh, went around the village and they examined the women in the village uh, to see if anybody is showing any signs or symptoms of breast cancer. And the results of that, was, of that study was actually really promising and it showed that there, they detected a number of women with late stage disease that then went on to have treatment and they were successfully treated. So um, it's, it's, it suggests that be a breast self-examination or clinical breast examination could actually work for early detection in Sudan. And what I particularly liked about this um, method was that it was practical uh, through its use of local resources and not investing, uh, trying to bring in new machines or trying to use something that we, it's far-fetched for um, our level. So um, I've talked about awareness and I've talked about screening for early detection, but controlling breast cancer doesn't end here. Um, those, if there's any, if there's cancer suspected through screening or through awareness, those people need to be diagnosed. Once people are diagnosed, then they need to be treated, and once people are treated, they have to be followed up. So there's a number of issues with regards to each of these steps, and this is building on the whole idea of you need to think of it as a whole system. You can't just think of awareness and that's it, and that's and early detection. Those people who are detected early then have to be treated. So. Um, with diagnosis, the diagnosis of cancer usually requires some form of imaging or um, a biopsy. And um, currently for, in Sudan, there are resource um, shortages, particularly with histopathology services and the human resources that are related to that service. So here we have resource shortages that are delaying treatment, and we know that uh, late treatment is associated with worse outcomes. Um, also for treatment, Treatment is arguably the most important step in this pathway because it's not early detection as such that saves lives, but it's actually early treatment. The whole uh, point... People from the Facebook ask you to speak up. Oh, sorry. <laughs> people are globally watching you. Sorry. Uh, so, up. the... Uh, what was I talking about? Sorry. <laughs> the, <laughs> yes, the early this treatment. Is a yes. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Um, so, yes, it's not early detection as such that saves lives, but it's actually early treatment. And there's a number of issues with regard to treatment now in, in this step in Sudan. So, one of the issues is actually accessibility. In Sudan, there's two main cancer centers that are used for managing uh, cancer. So, there is um, a Zerra Hospital in Khartoum, and there is um, the National Cancer <coughs> Institute in Jazeera. And both those cancer centers are located in close proximity to each other. They're located less than 200 kilometers apart. So there's a clear inequitable access for those who are, don't live in those areas of Sudan. Um, and also, uh, with regards to the infrastructure that's required for treatment, I'm just going to use radiotherapy as an example. So radiotherapy is, is a common modality that's used for treatment of many types of cancers, what, of which one of them is breast. And in Sudan, there's um, a shortage of, in radiotherapy, and the, there was an organization called the International Atomic Energy Agency, and they conducted, um, they actually did a radio assessment of the capacity of, of uh, radiotherapy for Sudan, in Sudan. And they give a recommendation that for developed countries, developing countries, sorry, uh, for every 500 patients with cancer, there should be one radiotherapy machine. And given the estimated number of cancer <coughs> cases that we have in Sudan, there should be, uh, I think there should be 16, as far as I'm aware. But currently we have around three or four. So there's a clear uh, imbalance of what we should have and what we do have. So again, resource shortage is leading to delay in treatment and there will obviously be a clear backlog if there's not enough if you think there's not enough uh, treatment, there's going to be many people with like a long waiting list and long backlogs. So those are just some of the issues that are associated with the diagnosis and the treatment stage. 
and I'm aware the time is tight, so I'm just going to wrap up here. And so we've just in conclusion, we know that breast cancer is an important issue in Sudan, the, the, of which the most important issue is late presentation and late detection. Uh, we know we, that we need to raise awareness and we need to think of ways of the, to deliver the message effectively to the, pop, to the population. And we need to consider a screening method that's effective, that's, that suits our resource levels, that suits our populations. But most importantly, we need to consider the resource, uh, the resource issues with the diagnosis and the treatment stage. Um, and that's all I have to say. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs> I'm very proud of this. Just a quick question. Some people would ask, how, I mean, do you have any specific statistic how many million thousands we have, really? In Sudan? Of yes, the Sudan. Cancer? Yes. There are statistics uh, that are available. But Numbers the, the like issue, what? Probably millions I'd say, or thousands or millions, I'd say. In, and these are from Sudan or from like a WHO? Thousands. Sorry. Those, well, there's statistics from the WHO and there's statistics from papers, but the issue is that there, because there's no... There is a cancer registry in Sudan that collects data for cancer, but it's not complete. It doesn't cover the entire country. Because you said because of the situation in Sudan, awareness is very important. Yeah. And also given the level of education, we are very low in our education, and so the awareness is very important. Yeah. Do you think if we design a very simple message, then it can be transformed into an app, a small app? So because in Sudan, they are, like Pesma said, obsessed with WhatsApp and everything. Yeah, yeah. Can an app be an option to, pr to produce small app to educate people in villages, farmers, women, they can, how they test themselves? That, that could be an option, um, but I'm not sure if people will actually go to download it, but I think we can use the, what we already have with WhatsApp, and I don't know if, if other people For saw, example, there might be some yeah, WhatsApp people can... Yeah, like I don't know if other people saw there was like a cholera video that was going around to raise awareness about cholera and how to prevent it. That was really effective and people, it would spread virally. Okay, so, so we can, we can so try. I think we can use... Uh,